Hello, you are watching chapter 6 out of 7 for the Learn to Ride a Skateboard Special Edition. This entire video can be viewed on the internet for free, or you can go to learntoridescapeboard.com and purchase one of the DVDs, or you can actually download one of the DVDs, also entirely for free, at that website. So this next section is where we're going to start to get into things on skate parks. And the first thing that we're going to go over is the actual terrain and the layout of a skate park. And then the next thing uh, is talking about the proper etiquette, sort of the unwritten rules of skating in a skate park. And uh, every skate park's different. I mean, you'll never really go to one that's completely the same, um, especially one that's behind us right now. This one's been expanded. This is Etney Skate Park. And as you can see, we have a flow park that I cannot wait to get out there. You, you make, make me crazy or now I'm shaking. Um, <laughs> But, and then there's a, a bunch of bowls and, and then there's street parks and so you, you got to pick which one you like before, you know, you spend all the time driving out to one and ending up getting there. And, and, so. and one thing that, that some people, you know, do emphasize uh, elsewhere in the video and I just want to bring it up yet again, if you're a brand new skater, don't go to a skate park, okay? Please learn the basics first. You know, you have to learn the basics of how to push, how to stand on the board, how to keep your balance. And again, as I said in, in another section of the video, the reason that I have that kind of outlook and the reason that I tell people that is because I want people to skate and love skating and continue to skateboard. Mm -hmm. And if you just go to a skate park and you're falling all over the place and getting frustrated, then you're going to give up. You're going to quit. Like yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I learned in a uh, parking structure, parking garage. Yeah. I learned how to go parking down. Parking lots anything like that mm -hmm. it's great and then you know in it, your driveway yeah <laughs> you know? and then when you think you're ready there's um, some amazing skate parks that offer some really great lessons like skate lab yeah they offer some i that's how i learned yep and I this one Steve Eddie's, Eddie's. and this one yeah this yeah. one there's also my friend abby zarne she teaches she teaches kids i mean there's a lot of people out there that's willing to teach you and and give you the opportunity that you know you want to have in skateboarding not just falling and hurting yourself and getting frustrated yeah okay so hope you enjoy this part beginning on skate parks Okay, now we're ready to talk about skate parks. Skate parks are my absolute favorite place to ride, but uh, before we get into that, we'll give you a little tour of some skate parks, show you some of the geography of skate parks, and explain some of the terminology involved in the terrain. So, let's get started. Now, your first time at any new skate park, it's a really good idea to check out the whole park. You know, just get there and take a look around. Just sort of skate around the whole perimeter and check things out. It'll help you to see which parts of the park are maybe nice and fun and easy for you, and which parts might be too advanced for you at this point. So keep your eyes open and take a look around. Pay close attention to where other people are at, you know, you don't want to get in other people's way. It's really important to have proper skate park etiquette so that you don't get hurt and you don't hurt anybody else. As you can see, this first skate park is a really good beginner park. A lot of the terrain is really small, nothing too tall, nothing more than four feet high. It's just really fun, nice, it's mellow. You can cruise around, check it out, and learn all your new basic tricks. It doesn't even matter how experienced you are or even the most experienced skater can have fun at any size park. Okay, so this is a whole new skate park and we're going to speed through here and just check out the perimeter. It's really cool. We're sticking around the edge, looking around, keeping our eyes open, staying out of other people's way, and then, whoa, check out this bowl. This one's a lot bigger than the first bowl. It's got about, you know, nine feet with a little bit of vert on the sides. And the shallow end's about six feet, and that's where the three kids are. Then we come over to this pool, and this is also about nine feet and six foot with a nice flow course. You can come in and out and cruise all around, so it's always really good to keep your eyes open. Then we zoom up to this last piece, and here's a pool. You have nice tile, some coping, and even a death box over to the left. So here's one more skate park. This one's really cool. It's also got some street area, good, you know, rails, ledges, benches, um, different things that kids can ollie up, do flip tricks and things like that. Again, we're over on the side kind of checking out the perimeter of the park, giving ourselves a little tour, you know. They're having fun in the park and then there's other kids hanging out to the side. So it's really good if you're not skating to hang out to the side so that you're not in the way of where other people are skating in the middle. 
Because a lot of times at parks, you know, there's multiple people skating, so it's really, really important to keep your eyes open and be aware of other people that are around so that everyone can have fun. Here's a really little area where you can learn things, and then, ooh, look at this. This is really cool. This is a snake run. It starts off shallow, and it gets deeper and lower and moves into a bowl. Here comes this guy. He's carving around, and then boom, nice front side air, and he flies out. Snake runs are super fun. Then finally, here's another bowl. This one's really cool. It has a rolling area to gain speed and momentum. You can go down the waterfall here and then up, doing a front side carve. It can start off being small, basic for beginners, and then as you, you know, it get advanced, you move into the deeper area and learn how to carve and ride and flow through the bowl. This way, you know, you can really have a good time, and it's good to always look around the whole perimeter of the park so that you can see what you like to skate and what you don't want to skate. And it's really, really fun. Every park's different. Okay, so now that you know some of the uh, terrain and what it looks like, we can go over some terminology that can uh, describe what all this crazy stuff is actually called. So what we're looking at right here is called a quarter pipe. And a quarter pipe or a ramp or a bowl or a pool, they all have very similar names to their pieces. So the green part right here, that's called the deck. And this yellow part is called coping. And a lot of times it's made out of cement because it's the coping of like a regular swimming pool. Or in a skate park, a lot of times coping is made out of metal. It's made out of some kind of steel. The red part here is called the transition. And this blue area is called the flat bottom. Now sometimes a transition can go a heck of a lot higher than this. This one's only about four feet high actually. So, let's pretend that it goes like that, a lot higher. And the transition actually continues to curve until it's actually going vertical. Well, that part of the transition that we see highlighted here in purple is called vert, appropriately enough. And vert can be anything from a couple of inches to a couple of feet, uh, just like everything else in the skate park. You know, the design and the layout can vary a great deal. Now where did all these names come from? Well, suppose you have something like this, a full pipe. Now, suppose that you built a platform on either side of the pipe. Then suppose you chop off the top half of the pipe. Well, there you go, you now have a half pipe that you can ride a skateboard in. Of course, you notice the transitions are butted up right against each other, which would make it pretty difficult to ride, so you stick flat bottom in between the transitions and there you go now you have a shape that is more familiar to what you've uh, seen on television and in skate parks and in people's backyards that is a full half pipe now the typical measurement that you hear when people talk about all of these ramps and pools they'll talk about something being say for example four foot okay well, let's take a closer look at that because there's actually two measurements that are involved. So like a four foot ramp would be from the deck to the flat bottom. That's typically what people are talking about when they talk about how big something is. But let's look at another example right here. Suppose we have two ramps that are both four feet high. But you notice the one on the left has a really fast, tight transition. And the one on the right has a much more gradual transition. The one on the left has a transition which is eight feet in diameter. The one on the right has a transition which is 16 feet in diameter. So the one on the left would be a 4 foot ramp or pool with an 8 foot diameter transition. The one on the right is a 4 foot ramp or pool with a 16 foot diameter transition. Of course, we never call it by its diameter. It's always called by the radius. So on the left it's actually a 4 foot with a 4 foot radius and on the right it's a 4 foot with an 8 foot radius. Now let's look at a real world example of that. As we come down and kind of see the cross section right here in this pool, you can see this transition is really, really tight. If we superimpose a circle over that transition, you can see how tight and fast the curve of it is. It's only four feet high, but it, it almost has vert on it. By contrast, here's one that's four feet high and is a much more gradual transition. You can see by the curve of the circle that it's not as close to vertical. Something like this would be a heck of a lot easier to ride 
it's a lot smoother, a lot easier to learn on as a beginner. Now this part that you see sticking out right here is called a hip. And again, hips come in many different shapes and sizes, but hips are basically parts that kind of bow out from a transition. Now we already know what the uh, quarter pipe is right there, but this part, highlighted in blue, is called a roll-in. And a roll-in is basically a transition that goes from the deck to the transition without any coping, so you can roll in nice and smooth. This piece right here is called a spine, and it's when you have two transitions and coping that is basically butted up against one another without any deck in between. This is an amoeba bowl. Now, bowls come in many different sizes and shapes, and they're often given nicknames based upon their appearance. For example, a kidney bowl is kind of shaped like a kidney. Uh, there's keyhole bowls, which kind of are shaped like keyholes. This one, if you were to look straight down upon it, uh, kind of has this amoeba sort of shape, hence the name, an amoeba bowl. It's a really tiny little bowl, it's only about four feet high with four foot transitions, and as you can see right here, it's sort of squared off, so you have straight sections and you have curved sections. The curved sections, which you can see highlighted in blue, are called the corners. The straight sections, which you see highlighted in red, are called face walls. Now corners and face walls are not always in pools. As you can see right here, there's this little mini half pipe, and the mini half pipe actually has a face wall in the back, and it actually has two corners attached to it as well. Now when we pan over a little bit, we can see highlighted in blue, this is called a pyramid. I think it's pretty obvious where that name comes from. We pan over a little bit more, we can see this sort of long embankment that's a uh, sort of a quarter pipe embankment. This type of embankment is called a flat bank. As you can see right here, this bank, highlighted in blue, has a lot of different sort of parts to it. There's a flat bank closer to the foreground and a sort of quarter pipe more in the background. Now as I mentioned earlier, coping can be made out of metal or it could be like this, which is a uh, skate park that's using standard pool coping. Now this image shows you a number of different things. It's a quarter pipe with a channel in between right here and this part that you see highlighted in red is called an extension and that extension is uh, obviously going up to vert. Let's speed through this footage a little bit and let's uh, zoom down here. We'll take a look at another extension a little bit further down. We can see, highlighted in red, this extension is a lot smaller, but still uses the exact same terminology. It's still called an extension, even though this one doesn't go up to vertical. Now here we see a more traditional style of pool. We can zoom in, and let's name all the parts that we see right here. I think they're all pretty obvious. The red part is called the deck. The yellow part is still called the coping. The green part is the transition, and we can see on the vert we have some blue tiles, which are just called um, tiles. <laughs> now here's an interesting piece. This is called a clam shell. Sometimes it's also called an orange peel, and this actually has what's called oververt. You can see this part highlighted in red is actually going beyond vertical and curving back in upon itself. We look down this way. Uh, this section here is called a snake run. As you can see, we have transitions on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And this person is coming down this little hip and carving around uh, that whole section there is called a snake run. Now this piece right here, uh, we can see two examples of oververt. In the background is the first piece of oververt that we looked at. Then this one right here in the foreground, you can see this arrow sort of shows where the vertical part is at. And then, if you look, you can see it actually goes beyond that. It continues to curve beyond vertical, back in on itself, and that is an example of oververt. This piece of oververt also has some nice cement pool coping on it. And as we pan over to the right here, we can see that this section of oververt is actually a part of a cloverleaf bowl, 
There's a small section of the clover leaf. It's about six feet deep with six foot transitions, or excuse me, I think that has seven foot transitions. And then right here, this part is nine feet, and that has uh, about two feet of vert on it. This is a totally different skate park. This is sort of a little mini half. It's got a horseshoe shape to it. And let's speed up and look at the street section. Here we can see a lot of stairs and a lot of rails in the street section. I won't even bother to label those because it's pretty obvious what stairs and rails are. And here we have another pool. This one is way bigger than the other ones that we've looked at. It's got nice pool coping on it. It has some tiles, it has some vert, it has a shallow end. It's about six feet deep. And then this guy is coming down this piece right here. It's called a waterfall and he's flying up into the deep end which is about 10 feet deep. And then we can zoom up ahead to this last section here. This is another example of a snake run. This one is a more traditional snake run. The first one we looked at uh, isn't a typical sort of snake run, but you can see this kid comes carving around and he hits this bowl at the end and launches right on out. Uh, the bowl at the end is about six feet deep and uh, I think that's about it. I think we're done. So now you have a good understanding of a lot of the terminology that is used to describe the terrain of skate parks. The next piece that we will get into before we actually show you how to ride in a skate park, we'll have one more thing, one more thing to go, and that is a little section on etiquette. A little bit of the proper behavior that is expected in skate parks, sort of the unwritten rules, if you will. So, Holly, if you would, explain some proper skate park etiquette to our viewers. Before you start a run, watch what other people are doing. I mean, you know, just look around. Check out the lines they're drawing. Pay attention. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> when you finish a run, move out of the way so that you don't get hit. When you lose your board, go get it and shout, board, board, when it gets away from you. This way it won't hurt other people when they're not looking and they're skating. Don't snake people. What's snaking you say? Snaking is dropping in on somebody else when they're skating. In a big skateboard park when it's an open area, you just have to be aware and flow with other people. But if it's a bowl or mini ramp or an enclosed vert ramp, then it's one person at a time and you have to make sure that you don't snake other people, which means if they're going first, you let them take the run. When you fall, get up immediately if you're not hurt. If you stay down, people will assume you're injured and, you know, we're gonna end up calling the hospital for you. Collisions happen, you know, and don't get mad. Sometimes you're going to run into somebody and sometimes somebody's going to run into you. Just be cool about it. It's skateboarding, you know, and make sure the other person's okay. Don't hang out in the center of the park. Stay along the fence and the edges, you know, and that's not in the bowls or on top of the obstacles or in the flat bottom. That's along the edges, the perimeter of the whole skateboard park. Don't drop in on a bowl when someone else is riding it. You know, wait your turn. That's called snaking and that's when somebody gets hurt if you don't wait. And also, don't hang your board into the pool either. That's just not cool. Well, thank you for that brief description of some proper skate park etiquette, Holly. Now, we're finally ready to move on and teach you how to skate. 